my name is Rachel. If you're new around here, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you the difference between my MRIs for Chiari malformation from my supine MRI, which is an MRI that's done laying down, versus my upright MRI, which is an MRI that's done sitting up in a special upright MRI machine, and I'll put a picture of that here. A common question that I get is, is it necessary to have an upright MRI to diagnose Chiari? Typically, Chiari can be seen on a supine MRI, but in the presence of connective tissue disorders such as EDS, a lot of times Chiari can appear to be worse on upright MRIs. Something that's even more important than whether you have a supine or upright MRI is being able to see a Chiari specialist. Unfortunately, most neurosurgeons and neurologists are not well trained in Chiari and often will miss Chiari on MRIs or they will see it and dismiss it and say, oh, that couldn't be causing your symptoms. What happened with me was that my neurologist actually did see the Chiari and it was in the MRI report, but he said that my Chiari was caused by my intracranial hypertension and this neurologist was not a specialist in Chiari. So when I was able to go to Chiari specialists, they actually disagreed with that neurologist and said, yes, Chiari is contributing to your symptoms. Anyways, so I'll go ahead and show you guys my supine MRI, my upright MRI before my Chiari decompression and fusion surgery, and also my most recent upright MRI from after my fusion and decompression surgery. One quick note before I show you guys my MRIs, and that's just that the purpose of this video is not to show anybody how to identify Chiari on an MRI or anything like that. It's just to show what one person's MRIs with Chiari look like supine versus upright versus post-op. Just wanted to clarify that before jumping in. And I'll be sure to link some videos from Chiari specialists below so you guys can learn from the true experts about Chiari. But anyways, here we go. This is a photo that I took off of Google showing the difference between a normal brain MRI and a brain MRI of somebody with Chiari. As you can see, there's a red line shown there that the brain should be above and with somebody that has Chiari. The bottom of their brain, which is called the cerebellum, droops below that line and sinks down into the spinal canal, and that can cause brainstem compression and compression of the spinal cord. Okay, so here's my supine brain MRI that was done before my Chiari decompression, and this little circle that I drew here kind of shows where the cerebellum is herniating down into my spinal canal. And that's not any kind of measurement or anything like that, but just kind of to show you where the herniation is. Here's my pre-surgery upright MRI in the neutral position. And that red circle right there just shows the bottom of my cerebellum. And just for reference, my herniation size was 6 millimeters before surgery. This is my supine MRI versus my upright MRI shown side by side. And as you can see, the herniation from my upright MRI does seem to be a bit more pronounced than on the supine MRI. And lastly, this is my post-decompression surgery upright MRI. Thankfully, my surgeon says he thinks it looks okay and thinks that there's enough room for some CSF flow in there, so we'll trust him on that. That dark area right there is the chunk of my skull that they took out during the decompression. Pretty crazy, huh? And here are all three of my MRIs shown next to each other for comparison. I actually was planning on doing a Chiari Q&A video this week, but I sat down to film it yesterday and I just was not filling up to finishing. So I decided to do a quick video just showing my upright MRI versus supine MRI for Chiari. And I hope that it was interesting for you and wish you guys all the best if you are being evaluated or treated for Chiari. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already be sure to click subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye!